Hey kids, we're here and we've got another exciting game just for you. In fact, let me point like this with my left hand. You'll see why in just a second. We're getting ready to do this awesome game, but you have to use your hand you don't normally write with or do things with. We call that your less dominant hand. For me, it's my left hand because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, it would be your right hand that you'll use for this game. Kids, you're gonna get in a line right here. You're gonna be right here at the tape line and you're gonna have to use your less dominant hand to take a ball and shoot it into the bucket. You only get one shot at a time and as soon as you take your shot, you'll go to the back of the line, then your teammate will go. Why are we doing this game today? Good question, because two characters, Ehud and Eglon, that we're gonna hear about in the Bible, they were called upon in this crazy sequence by God that involved Ehud's left hand. You'll hear all about it in just a second, but it involved his left hand, Ehud and Eglon. Mm, I know the suspense is killing you, but for right now, let me show you if I can make this shot. Here we go, left hand, I'm saying my prayers, boom. Oh, but you know what? I'm breaking rules. I'm gonna try it with that hand. Oh my goodness, let's see. See if third time's a charm. Oh my goodness. See if fourth time's a charm. There we go. Yeah. Okay, took me four times. Hope you have better success. Hey kids, we're so excited about today's Bridgewood Kids experience. I know you are too. We've got our next gen team. Don't they look great right up here? Guys, how excited are you for what's about to take place? Pretty pumped. Yes, they can't contain it, neither can I. So here's what we gotta do before we get going in this wild and crazy and fun journey called Bridgewood Kids. We need you to buckle up. Are you ready, team? Let's buckle up. Let's bring those seatbelts over and click. Now, here's what's in store. We've got all kinds of fun games. Do you like music? We have worship. We have interactive lessons. We're gonna have small group time. So much jam packed into this Bridgewood Kids experience. But before we have launch, we wanna hear you make your loudest noise. I know you can do it because you're kids. So on three, let's count them down. They're gonna make their loudest noise. And I think we're gonna be able to hear it from right here. Ready guys? Here we go. One, One two, two, three. three. Oh, I think they're ready, guys. That was pretty good. They are totally ready. All right, let's make it happen. You changed my life. You gave me a new start. You gave me a new start. All because of you, all because of you You make me smile, you gave me a new heart Gave me a new heart You make me smile It's all because of you, all because of you All because of you
soul You gave me a new song Gave me a new song You saved my soul It's all because of you All because of you You make me strong I know you're with me I know you're with me You make me strong It's all because of you All because of you All because of you guys you guys are probably wondering why I have this ladder with me today you see there's this cat outside that keeps running away and getting stuck high up in the trees you would think that he'd learn his lesson and stop running away but over and over again he keeps getting himself into danger and needs to be saved that silly cat hmm that reminds me of the big God story this week the Israelites kept disobeying God and kept getting into trouble God delivered his people from difficult situations over and over and over again. When God led the Israelites out of slavery, he promised them a land of their own, called the Promised Land, where they would be free to worship him alone. But before God led them into the Promised Land, he gave his people some instructions. God knew that other people would already be living in the land, people who worship false gods. I am your deliverer. He reminded the Israelites that he was their deliverer. Miranda, can you remind the kids what it means to be a deliverer? Yes, that means that God set them free from their enemies and any difficulties, but to keep their freedom, the Israelites needed to worship God alone. God gives them a warning in Joshua 23, 9 and 15 through 16. Let's read that together. The Lord has driven out before you great and powerful nations. To this day, no one has been able to withstand you. But just as all the good things the Lord your God has promised you have come to you, so he will bring on you all the evil things he has threatened, until the Lord your God has destroyed you from this good land he has given you. If you violate the covenant of the Lord your God, which he has commanded you, and go and serve other gods and bow down to them, the Lord's anger will burn against you and you will quickly perish from the good land he has given you. The Lord promised the land to them, but he also warned them to not have any other gods before him. Remember, the first commandment God gave to his people said, you shall have no other gods before me. God knew if the Israelites mixed with the people from the lands around them, that they would forget him and would start worshiping the false gods. The Israelites chose to disobey God anyway. When they got to the promised land, they destroyed some of the altars for the false gods, but not all of them. 
and they started mixing with the other people. This started a cycle in the lives of the Israelite people of rebellion, which means disobeying or going against God. Repentance, which means turning away from sin, and restoration, which means coming back to God. A generation after conquering Jericho and other cities in the Promised Land, the Israelite people forgot that only God saves, and they started to worship the other gods. Because of their disobedience, God allowed the Israelites to be conquered by other people. Still, every time God's people cried out for him, God raised up leaders called judges to deliver the Israelites from their enemies. Again and again, God delivered his people. Let's read Judges 3.12 to see how long the Israelites continued this pattern. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and because they did this evil, the Lord gave Eglon, king of Moab, power over Israel. For 18 years, the cruel king Eglon made the Israelites miserable, so they cried out to God. Lord, I'm coming to you right now. We are in distress and we need your help. Please deliver us. Please be with us. And even though they'd been unfaithful, God heard their cries and delivered them through a man named Ehud. Ehud had an interesting physical trait, one that maybe some of you guys have. Are there any left-handers out there? Raise your hand if you guys are left-handed. Ehud was a left-handed man. When soldiers went into battle, they usually held their shields with their left hand and their swords with their right. If you were left-handed, you would not fight like everyone else, and God used Ehud's unusual fighting style to help deliver God's people. God helped Ehud come up with a plan to save his people from cruel King Eglon. One way King Eglon harassed the Israelites was by demanding that they give him money or gifts called tribute. Ehud was chosen to take the tribute to the evil king. After presenting the tribute gift, Ehud told the king he wanted to give him a secret message. King Eglon told his servants to leave the chamber so he could talk in private. When the servants were gone, Ehud grabbed his hidden sword and struck it into the king's belly. The king had not been expecting Ehud to use his left hand for anything, and definitely not for that. The long knife went so far into King Eglon's huge belly that it got stuck. Ehud didn't even bother to take it out. He just locked the doors of the room and slipped away. After Ehud had safely escaped the king's palace, he gathered an army of Israelite warriors and they chased King Eglon's men out of the country. God used Ehud to deliver his people from the rule of a king who had mistreated them. God's people were delivered from the terrible king. The Israelites saw how God delivered them and once again they chose to worship him alone. For the next 80 years they lived in peace from God's deliverance. Through this part of the Big God story we see a picture of God's grace, a word that means undeserved kindness. Though the Israelites knew God's command, they still rebelled. Yet God faithfully delivered his people when they turned away from their sin and cried out to him. It's easy to get frustrated with the Israelites for their disobedience, but sometimes we make some of the same mistakes. God calls us to worship him by loving him and loving others. In fact, Jesus' number one commandment was to love one another as he loves us, but we still turn away from God and rebel. We do this in many ways, refusing to help the kid being bullied at school, or even jumping in with the bullying, gossiping about people when we should love them, watching or listening to things that aren't good for us, taking God's name in vain, or not taking time to read God's word, pray, or worship him by going to church. We see both in the lives of the Israelites and in our own lives today that God continually delivers his people when they repent or turn back to him. God hears our cries and delivers us. He also restores us to a right relationship with Him. 
How amazing. Let's pray and thank him now. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you just for this opportunity to learn about your word. We thank you so much that you deliver us from our sins, that you save us, that you continually give us multiple chances to make the right decisions. And I pray that you would just help these students as they go through this week. I just pray that they would know that they are forgiven and that when they make mistakes that you will be there with them. And we just pray that they would have a good week. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Love is an ocean, you can drown me The sweet embrace, the lovely taste, I taste the sea I'm under grace, the place to be It means I'll never need an umbrella I'm cool in the cold, in the hot weather Whether or never I ever Understand I'm a man in the hands of great plans I stand with faith and a life I never known to touch And still I stop my clutch, but I'm like, what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? Live to no end, this is living The life I've been given's a gift If I'm a living, I'm a living to death So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? And live to no end, this is living The life I've been given's a gift If I'm a living, I'm a living Hey boys and girls, we are back with another amazing segment that we call Trivia, Trivia Time. Time. Question number one, what did God tell the Israelites about the people that remained in the Promised Land? In question two, it's short but so important. What does it mean to repent? Question 
Question number three. How did God use Ehud to deliver the Israelite people? And question four, how has God delivered us? So on that note, kids, we have one more thing. Participle, participle, participle. Hey kids, this has been so exciting hanging out with you today. Have y'all guys had fun? Had fun. Yeah. Yes. And so before we go, we want to let you know what our mission statement is. It's what defines us here at Bridgewood Kids. Here it is. We want to be kids so close to Christ that everyone in the world will know him. Take care, kids. See you next time.